G'day and welcome to Market Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video, a bit of an overview video on barrels or understanding your barrel. Um, so a few things to go through with that from barrel temperature to or shooting with barrel temperature to barrel wear to um, cleaning a barrel to well, sort of a general overview of bits and pieces for to help with some of the questions we get. Um, and I suppose I would start with the, um, the one that really prompted me, it might be halfway through the conversation in some fashion, but it was the one that really prompted me to go down this road, was people saying uh, a couple of comments. One is, how do you shoot so many shots in a row um, without having a break and not letting your barrel cool down? Um, a similar conversation is, the rifle I shoot, it's a, only a light barrel, but if I shoot any more than three shots, then it starts shooting all over the place. And what we're talking about is barrel temperature and what should limit you on barrel temperature. And it sort of opens the conversation up to, the whole, to a whole lot of things and I'll start going through that process. Um, to start off with barrel temperature and what people think of barrel temperature, so essentially when you can feel your barrel is warm, um, that's not very relevant to the actual steel. We humans, we feel something at 50 degrees or in, in Celsius at, in 100 degrees, in Fahrenheit or 110 degrees in Fahrenheit, we feel that is very hot. Steel doesn't really understand that as being very hot until you times that by five. It's a lot more temperature or 10. There's a lot more temperature that a steel has to deal with before it changes dramatically. It does change subtly in places, but we really can't feel it. So both in the level of, does it feel okay to shoot heat wise? Listen, it's only a very general guide. It's actually the inside of your barrel where the bullet, but more to the point, the gases, those expanding gases, all that erosion of that fire firing up the middle there, that's where the massive temperature is. How much transfers to the outside of the, barrier, uh, of the barrel is very much dependent on all sorts of other details. So what we can do feeling wise is limited, but it still can be a guide. Oh, I suppose to explain what I do, the way we do things, we largely, well not largely, we always use heavy barrels, whether they're factory heavy barrels or they're target custom really heavy barrels. Um, what I've always found, and I suppose I've learned through the, through the process of shooting, is that we're shooting extreme long range or a set process, which means it's a fairly steady plod. Roughly, <laughs> maybe a shot every minute, probably a shot every 90 seconds or that neck of the woods, but it's a plod. Tunka tunka tunk is what we're going with. We're also generally running a fairly heavy bullet and although a decent amount of powder, it's a slower burning powder in something that's not pushing any boundaries on, on, on pressure uh, or on stability side of things. So it tends to be a gentle plod. And, but what we're actually finding is we're doing most of our shooting with the barrel warmed up. And the theory is trying to keep that at a certain temperature. Um, not particularly for, for the barrel's temperature sake, but we don't want to get to the point where we're overheating things. Um, and if it's a bigger round pushing a lot more powder, then they'll tend to slow the rate down a little bit. But we're more dealing with the conditions. And the moment we have, or I have a five minute break, or even a three minute break, or a 10 minute break, or whatever it is, all of a sudden I've lost the reading of the last bullet. So I try and get my job done as quickly as possible, but by having a constant out there, less about the barrel, more about, I know where the last shot went, I know where those wind was doing, what I can't see, I can see in the impact. So the closer I get to a follow up on that, I can adjust to those conditions, hopefully, which are the same, because there's only been one minute or 90 seconds in between the shots. So that's my excuse, that's the reason I'm doing it. The way I make it work is by, in, my, in the theory of things, is I am set up the rifle to where everything works at that level. I make sure my load works at that level and I'm actually looking for the grouping. So if there's a little bit too much pressure because of the extra temperature in the barrel, then I have to have already dealt with that side of it. Now, I hear, I suppose that's the reason we're doing what we're doing and what we're doing with it. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about where they shoot a three shot string or a five shot string because otherwise it starts to shoot all over the place. Now I actually hear about that from guys shooting extreme long range as well, but largely you hear about that from a hunting rifle and that it goes all, all over the place. And the truth is in, in the simple thinking about that, the, 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 a, a rifle all of a sudden shooting erratically because the temperature raises in the barrel Listen, it doesn't quite make sense. Um, not, not, my, not by itself. 
So if I take a rifle that's set up and everything was shooting really well, and it's just temperature that makes it shoot badly, listen, be, listen, it's unlikely. It's conceivable, and I'll go through what can conceivably do that. But the more likely thing is you've got a cluster of things that are causing problems and they end up building up. And the three shot group, you pull off by getting everything just right and a little bit of holding your mouth at the right angle. And once you go to a five shot group, it's actually, it would do it without the temperature, it's having problems. And that can be to do with the fact that it's not a free floater barrel, the fact that it's not very well gunsmith, the fact that the load's not very good, the fact it's not very nice to shoot, the fact that the platform's not very good, the fact that the shooter isn't actually in key with his rifle so well or knows or got a correct form or all the other bits and pieces that go with it. What could cause that and be part of an extra thing to make what wasn't brilliant, not even less brilliant, um, is, um, is the things that temperature could cause and temperature can change. If you have a load, I suppose we'll start with the very, very simple sort of stuff. If you have a load that was on the edge and then you get more temperature into it, it starts to become unstable. It starts to overpressure because you've got too much temperature. So that could change things. You can go into the subtle details of if you've ladder tested and you actually are working with a rifle that has decent harmonics and you needed to find a node to make it work. When you heat the barrel up, you change the molecular um, density of the barrel by heating it up, even if you've only heated it up to, let's say, 150 degrees, um, it's actually going to change that vibration rate. You've also heated up your load a little bit, you've changed the speed of the bullet. The combination is no longer going to be there. So if harmonics was a, a key and your, light and your ladder testing was a key to making this thing shoot, once it gets to a certain temperature or wherever that temperature you did your, like your, your development at is where it needs to be. Beyond that, it's going to be out of whack a little bit. Um, you can go into the barrel was touching the stock or the, the, the rifle, the bedding wouldn't cause it by itself, but it's enough erraticness in that side of things that causes issues. You can go to the gunsmithing side of things. So how the barrel is actually mated to the threads to the action, um, the, that little bit of expansion there moves to where the barrel is actually moving around between shots. This is all conceivable, unlikely but conceivable. The most likely thing is that the whole rifle doesn't shoot brilliantly and the shooter can pull off a good three shot group but it starts to struggle once it needs to go in consistency sort of stuff. Um, but like I said, all those things could be part to do with it. The main thing that I see that causes temperature, and I suppose that's where we'll go, is if you've got your scope down low, then you'll start to get mirage over your barrel. Unless you dealt with less out to deal with mirage over your barrel, you start to do that. So then all of a sudden your point of aim is moving, even though you mightn't be able to see it so clearly, you might have temperature coming off your barrel, going through your scope vision, which generally you'll see as blurriness, but in some cases you won't even see that. It just might be moving your point of aim a little bit. So that's a mirage side of things various ways I've been through on the channel and fixing that. You obviously have the, the Mirage deflectors, that flat bit you see down the top of an F-class rifle, that sort of stuff to stop that heat coming up. But that's, that's a point that could really happen. Um, I, I suppose without going further, what, what I'd really say on that sort of level is the people who are feeling their barrel and saying it's hot, it's burning my fingers. Um, Listen, if it is a point that you really find, if I get it to this temperature and it, that point of aim has moved, that is conceivable. There's enough heat to where the barrel's got a stress in it and it's actually, um, especially with the likes of hammer forging or button rifling, that sort of stuff where it's pushed through and there's a little stress in there as it changes temperature, even in the lower level of things. And keep in mind, if you've got it so it's super hot on the outside, to really hot on the outside to touch, then it's really, really hot on the inside probably so maybe there's a little bit more distortion inside there. Largely, what I find is it's not a concern um, and a constant temperature is where it works well for me. But like I said, there are some details that can go with that. In, in doing some and talking to some good gunsmiths to see if there's other little clues they could tell me, other things they could tell me um, as to what would cause that comment of it all of a sudden shoots erratically all over the place. Well, I've pretty much been through all that sort of stuff. Um, in what I've just said, but what then came up with is actually running your barrel too hot, actually running it too hot. What, is it, what does that cause? The first comment was, well, what is too hot? That's you've really got to be pounding rounds or you've got a load um, 
and it, it, where people have tried to get too much speed, they've got too much pressure. Well, it might not even be showing up in pressure so much um, in the more obvious sensors. It might actually just be putting too much of that fire down the barrel. Now, there's various things that can cause that, but it's generally in the hand loading world. Um, and it certainly opened up the, the comment that, and all gunsmiths will have seen this, guys have gone and destroyed a barrel in a day at the range. And what could cause that? Largely it comes down to, like I said, very hot loads. And, and I've got stories of a guy with uh, less than 300 rounds of ammo, so still 300 rounds of ammo, in a 338, 375 Weatherby Magnum that has shot out the barrel, torn, got, got rid of the rifling for the first two thirds of a 28 inch barrel. So over sort of 14 inches of barrel, over 16 inches of barrel gone, of the rifling gone. Um, with what he did. Now, 300 rounds in, I think it was half a day at the range, means there was a lot of shooting. He loaded a lot of ammo and went out and, and pounded away. But why would that happen? That potentially, you've got enough minutes to have plotted along and so that shouldn't have happened, should it? Well, it was a new barrel, so there's another little ingredient, but it also depends on the load. I've also heard of guys, um, what was the other story? A 20 inch barrel on a 300 wind mag trying to get the same speeds as a 26 or a 28 inch barrel. So running a lot of powder. That one ended up where it actually tore not just the rifling out, it took the whole, the, the center um, 60 thou of the bore out and fell out with the barrel. He was getting a not phenomenal speeds, but it was shooting terribly because it was the bullet was actually free jumping a good four inches down the barrel. So. Once again, that was a very hot load, hand loads trying to create speed out of something that couldn't really get it. Um, but I think there's another ingredient to keep in mind. This moves into another side of things, and that is actually running your barrel in. Now, there's schools of thought, you don't need to do it, or you do need to do it, or you should do it this way, or you should do it that way. Um, and I suppose I'll get into that a little bit more when I talk about cleaning, but my school of thought to go with running in a barrel is as much as anything, that there's two things that I wanna do. One, I'd like to know the barrel. So to shoot and clean and then shoot one or more or three or whatever it is and clean and see how much carbon I'm getting and just do basic little cleans gives me an idea of what's actually happening. It lets me have my finger on the button a little bit. I'm actually seeing what's actually happening. I've also done it without question, without touching, without doing it all. Um, and my, my 243 got run in on the opposite way of doing it. Um, factory loads, but 55 grain bullets doing 3,900 feet per second, and you'd think it'd be terrible. It didn't have any problems, and it's still, as I've said, it would change the barrel now, not because it was worn, but over 2,000 rounds, and with a, coming up 3,000 rounds, and no dr drastic, drastic wear on it whatsoever. But, there's another little key that I go with this. Um, we'll ignore the, two, ignore the 243 because it sort of breaks those rules a little bit, but this was still fine and I think largely it will be. My main call to run it in is I want to know. I said there were two things. The other thing is I want to start a bit slower. If, and I think where most of the damage actually happens is you have to think about the inside of the barrel is it does need conditioning um, to being shot, to firing bullets. Now the better lapped a barrel is, so match lapped and all that sort of stuff is going to help because it has that, but it hasn't been hardened on the inside of the barrel. And there's the work hardening, the fire front, the heating up, there's thousands of degrees of temperature going down which is scorching the surface, um, and then it's cooling down actually very rapidly for the thousands of degrees down to hundreds of degrees in seconds is what's actually happening as it transfers into the barrel. Um, so that is a process that is actually work hardening the material. Now, the deal with work hardening is that you only want to take the actual temperature, even though it's being flame, the flame front is in the thousands of degrees, the steel only wants to get to a, uh, it can only take so much before it actually starts to change in consistency. And what that means is that when that flame front goes down, if, if in a, on an unrun in barrel with the little sharp edges, even in a lapped barrel where, it hasn't, where those edges have been smoothed off a little bit on your rifling, but they haven't been hardened, they are still vulnerable, but not as vulnerable as just a, a fresh barrel, be it buttoned or cut or whatever it is, those sharp edges are very vulnerable. 
Now, if you get enough fire down there, if you basically shoot hot enough rounds and enough of them fast enough, then two things are happening. One is the little sharp edges haven't got a chance to actually hard or sop, round off a little bit, <laughs> as they will do, um, and harden up before they are going and eroding. So that's basically by loading up a magazine and going bang, 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 and no doubt trying to get a group out of the rifle is probably what's actually happening. Trying to get a group and shoot some down there and just doing that with a bit of speed because I just want to get in here and go bang and bang and then see my group and do it again and do it again. What's actually happening in that format is rather than hardening those the rifling edges, it's actually glowing them and it's actually eroding them. So it starts tearing them off. It doesn't get to harden because they never get to get cool enough. And once that metal has changed to that point, once the metal has gone to where it has properly glowed and changed its consistency, so it's actually lost its, 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 its material hardness and turned and changed the metal into a slightly different product by being over, uh, overheated, it then erodes and it just keeps on going and eats away. And that's why in those rare instances they've worn so much. Now what will be the fix to that? Well probably a different load to start off with would have been a smart idea. Um, and slow things down a little bit and just do a, do a little bit of working up on it. And that might only be half an hour to an hour at the range of letting it get to that place before they went where they're going. But probably the 300, what's in my head at the moment, the 338, um, 375 Weatherby Magnum, um, was there was just too many rounds in a hurry. And maybe even an older barrel would have struggled with that side of things. Running a lot of speed, running a lot of gas and throat erosion down there and just too much. Um, the, uh, the, and I suppose that's the rule for anything. If you just pound away and get things hot enough, and as said, the outside of the barrel isn't necessarily where the clue is. There might, there might be a clue there, but it's not going to be glowing red like the inside of the barrel. So and just slowing down enough to let that heat transfer come out to where it starts radiating, radiating off the barrel is going to be enough. But it's really slow and steady to start off with as a simple rule. And I would go with running in just to see what's actually happening. The other key it's going on with, if you do the running inside of things, you've just turned your one shot and do and, and do a push through or pull through or whatever it is, do a clean with one shot so you get an idea. Well, there's another ingredient you're doing is you'll thoroughly cool in the inside after you've done that one shot. You do another shot or another three and then you're cleaning again. Once again, you're thoroughly cooling down. So you're letting the work hardening process happen in a very, very straightforward fashion. Okay. So what that moved into is the cleaning side of things. And I suppose the bit which I'd go with cleaning, that also moves into a little bit into rifling. A lot of people ask about 5R rifling, um, what sort of rifling to use, yada yada. Um, to be truthful, I've never fussed with rifling. Um, the basic bedding process I do, and then the way, the, what I shoot, I, I feel the 5R, as much as there's logic to, and you can research that and see what the difference is, as much as a logic to the reduced angles and, and making it smoother and, and, more, and better for um, barrel wear and bullet um, wear and that sort of stuff, I believe that once the, the rifle is run in and tooling along, um, there's really very little, bit, little difference. And I couldn't say, I, ha I haven't tested it really thoroughly, but I believe there's very little difference. Um, what I tend to run is, um, in the cleaning side of things, is I run very little cleaning. I, I run equilibrium as the term to use for it. And that means that once I get it all firing, I really don't clean. I do do the basic clean when I've been out and shot two rounds to 50 rounds. I'll come back in and I'll put a light oil patch through it and then I'll put a dry patch through it, um, sometimes with a patch, sometimes with a, um, with a push through, with a mop. Um, I'm not too fast on that. What I really want to do is just take out any excess carbon that's left after the last shot. Um, and I want to put a lot, I end up with a very, very tiny light oil film in there. So when I put it in the safe, it can be there for two years and I don't have to worry about it. Or two days, doesn't matter, but it's fine. It's looking after itself. I live in a dry environment. I don't need to do much more. So that's what I do. Now for me, that works really well. And the logic to with what I'm doing is that pretty much the rifle I pull out of the cupboard was the rifle exactly the same condition. Oh, I should say with that cleaning, I clean the bolt, I clean the chamber, I do all those other bits and pieces, but the, but the actual bore I do very little with. Um, the rifling area I do very, very little with. The logic is when I come out to go and shoot again, it's going to shoot exactly the same as when I put it away. 
Now that works for me and I don't have any issues, but it isn't necessarily the right way to do it. But it works for me and it works really well and that's what I go with. So don't fix what ain't broken. But you go to the a lot of the target shooter world um, and they would completely disagree with you. And they disagree with you because of what works for them. Now most of those guys, F-class precision shooters, 22 shooters, all sorts of stuff, places where I don't clean, they clean fastidiously and continuously and they also fix shooting problems by cleaning bores, by cleaning barrels, cleaning the rifling. Um, running proper solvents, running pace through them and getting them back to really clean and then having two or three or ten shots to get back to where they've got their equilibrium and then they're nice and clean until they foul up and shoot again. Um, and the simple truth is that may be how your shooting style needs it. Because one place says, or someone like me, says this works, means the truth of it is I can only say it works for what I've seen. It doesn't mean it works for all. And there certainly are some. And like I said, 22 shooters, well, precision 22 shooters, they shoot super ridiculously small groups of their 22s. They clean their barrels fastidiously. Very, very clean, make sure they're perfectly clean. Most of your precision shooting is done in the, in the precision shooting, not precision rifle shooting, the, the, the action target shooting, but in the way of target shooting in bench rest style of things where they're after extremely small groups, they clean with great big heavy barrels, they clean them all the time. And as speaking to one of those gunsmiths said that his most common problem, someone will have gone and shot 300 rounds and comes back in and said, oh, this, is, this barrel's had it, it's no good, it's, it's wrecked. He just gets it and has a look and cleans it and cleans it properly, cleans it out, solvent and paste and bits and pieces and goes through it, cleans it properly, gives it back to him, it's all fixed. It's all done, it's all fixed. So what would be the difference? Which is the right way? Well, as said, there isn't a right way. It comes down to what suits you. As for the finer details, I suppose there's a couple of things I would say. I don't shoot that many rounds through a rifle to start off with. We do uh, we don't do a load development. We do a very, very crude load development until I get it to where it shoots okay. So sometimes that might be done in six rounds of actually seeing I've got my pressures right, uh, I set up a, a jump that I, is a guess, and then I go and shoot them. It shoots fine and it groups well. I don't do any more. So then I'm largely, with the time I'm running and the, the amount of videos we're trying to produce, Largely, most of my shooting is done on video, so I may have done everything with that, that rifle and shot out to 3,000 yards or wherever it was and done that all under 100 rounds and then I'm changing the barrel and going to something else. So maybe I'm not running enough rounds with those loads to really get to that point. Um, there are rifles where I've shot a lot more than that and not any issues. So why then, then it comes into why I haven't run to that point. Once again, I haven't run to that point because they still shoot well enough. Come back to that 243, just before I pulled it out and not too far under 3,000 rounds, um, and I was still able to take out an egg at 1,100 yards with that. So that one didn't even get a run in. So what's the deal? What's the difference? My theory is the powder I'm using the, I'm running a slower burning powder with a heavier bullet um, in the minimum twist I can get away with. The combination with good bullets, the combination is that the bullet is not leaving as much copper. They, they end up with a nice equilibrium that keeps on falling through on itself. And with a different powder or a different bullet or a different burn rate or a different, 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 different and more rounds and that sort of thing comes to the point where they start to get it clinging a little more, it starts to grab a little more and it becomes an issue. And maybe that would happen for my stuff as well. There's another little detail I'd say. It fits largely a little bit into the competition world, a little bit into the testing world. It depends on what you're chasing. If you're constantly shooting, developing a load to try and get your best, your lowest SDs and ESs, extreme spreads and, and, um, <coughs> and the, the, the standard deviations, um, constantly load developing for that sort of stuff, you can be shooting 200 to 300 to 500 to 1,000 rounds because that's what you do. Um, those, there's a lot more of it and maybe that's a little more prone to get, uh, I suppose, two things. One is by trying to change that, you'll find a lot of people that get their extreme spreads by keeping their barrel very clean because they're actually after this exact same pressure all the time, which I feel I get with equilibrium, but for their setup might work better with a cleaner barrel. 
There's also the people who are group shooting, 100 yard group shooting or close range, 300 yards, 600 yards, whatever it is, close range group shooting, constantly working on their load, on their seating depth, on their, with their, doing, with their barrel tuner or their seating depth or their, whatever it is, all the bits and pieces to try and get this really small, which is more the competition shooter who then needs to do up a thousand rounds to do this season. Um, once again, you're running so many rounds, but also tend to be running a little faster burning powder, a little faster moving projectile to get all that sort of stuff. So maybe it's in that place. And then maybe there's also a little bit in the type of powder you're using. I do, we are very limited in what I can get access to, so I don't test a lot of that. I tend to use the ADI powders, and I tend to not mess around too much. If it works, it works, so I'm not after the finer details. If I can get the thing to perform at reasonable speed, and I can get it to group well, out at two and a half thousand yards or 3,000 yards, where I've got the excuse of the conditions to work with, equal I've got the pressure of the conditions, but if I can just be just missing or just on my 24 inch plate, I'm sort of done. So I suppose I'll come back to the, 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 there isn't a right way to do this. It is, it's got to come down to what suits you. Um, I would stay with the what ain't fixed, don't broken. So that means I, I would be a proponent of suggesting don't clean your barrel excessively unless you need to. Certainly, for guys who want to look down the barrels and say, oh, I can see a little mark down the middle of the rifle and there I can see with my boroscope, I need to have that sorted out. No, I, I don't, that, that, that's a philosophy that I've largely seen not relevant, but if it's shooting well, leave it alone. If you've got problems with the shooting, then there's a lot of other places to look first, but largely if the rifle shot well and then something changed and everything else is good, so the action screws are tight, there's the scope isn't falling off or the, everything else is good and the only thing that's changed is the rifle isn't shooting as well, then maybe you do need to clean it and maybe the no clean, the equilibrium thing isn't going to work for you because your setup, your barrel, your load needs the constant cleaning. So I think that's all I want to touch on today. I've done, I've done um, videos on barrel twist. I've done videos a little bit on barrel length and understanding that side of things. This one is really about just understanding your barrel. Um, certainly running too hot, too fast for a long time. Guys who need to set up for precision targets and need to set up a magazine so they can feed rounds through. Well, maybe one of the things you could do is go back to single feeding what, so that you're not, not doing that action in that bolt and get them in and fire another one so quickly when you're running the the beefed up loads in precision shooting. Um, the well, Listen, that's, that's your case, but slowing that rate down is going to make your barrel wear a lot less. As for barrel temperature and the, the simple thing of shooting it, yes, you need to make sense of what's happening. If it's going erratic, once a barrel is hot, there's got to be something else in the ingredient. Heat isn't the only thing. Your load's on the edge, your barrels, something isn't probably set up dead right, but um, I get it, it's conceivable that can happen, it's just unlikely and not something we see a lot of. Um, as for I said, different sorts of rifling, yeah, that's, um, that's uh, I've found very little, once, once a barrel is run in, then I've found, and it had a few rounds down, I found very little difference on that side of things. There's good theory, but I've found very little difference out of the little bit of testing I've done. And I suppose that's the that would finish on the um, finish on the running into the barrel. Yes, I think if nothing else, it's a good thing for you to get to know your barrel. Slows down that process, helps a little bit just by the timing of things with letting that barrel break in, but it also lets you see what's going on. Do you need to do it? No, you don't need to do it. But it really comes down to what you actually need. Anyway, guys, I hope that um, made some sense. I hope that wasn't too much of me just rambling, um, but that was to try and help with those, those questions we started with. Yeah, thanks for checking in on us. I'll catch you next time.